What's up everybody, this is Yogi Chris, and this is, I'm at my house, there's Fernando, light show. But I wanted to talk to you about the Yoga for Sorcery program and the new Beast Yoga program that's happening. So Rosh, who I live with, you know, is the foremost seducer on the planet, and he has asked me to teach the IMC Nation guys particular yoga that helps in what we call the beasting process, the beasting routine. So we do uh, basically calisthenics, it's prison calisthenics, and it's repeated movements, very good for the body. Everybody got stronger. We've gone through it for like a year and a half and new guys are coming in, but people need like yoga stuff for you know, health of their wrists, their shoulder sockets and the rotator cuff, uh, their hips. And basically I know some fundamental things in yoga that would very much help them, but I'm distinguishing this from the yoga for sorcery program. And it's really, really good. It's really good for the sorcerers because sorcery being left-hand yoga, sorcery being mental practices, manifestations, even as simple as just meditation. That's the direction of yoga for sorcery. So don't be turned off by the word sorcerer or scared by sorcery. That's just what that means. It's just preparing people to have a clean body, clean mind, clean energy field so that they can do concentration practices versus the beast yoga, which is the health of the body so that you can do, you know, hella push-ups, hella pull-ups, hella squat jumps, hella calisthenics, you know, and be healthy and, and still be able to relax so you don't become a tense ball of, you know, tension. Uh, calisthenics guys, they look like balls of, they got muscle, but they're just like walking around like bricks. <clears throat> And they get injuries too, and they have to tape up things and, you know, anything that you do repeatedly. I have techniques that will really, really help you. So if you want the beast yoga, that's actually free for right now if you're an IMC Nation. So if you're not an IMC Nation and you're a guy watching this on my yoga YouTube, then there'll be a link to my yoga YouTube, uh, to, sorry, to my yoga telegram group. It's a free yoga telegram group. Join that and, you know, you'll see more info about the beast yoga. As far as yoga for sorcerers. What I've realized is that the guys have a big aptitude and a big ability to sit still and to sense energy. They're also very tense, but they need more emphasis on stretching than the beasts. The beasts need injury prevent, uh, prevention and some alignment things. Everybody needs that, but the sorcerers may not be doing the calisthenics like the beasts are doing. The sorcerers are attaining something more subtle. And so I go deeper into the nuances of stretching and mobility and help them release deeper tissues in their body so they can sit more comfortably longer without distraction. But what I've always wanted to teach and now it's happening and I'm realizing, I just taught a class on the first one or maybe the second one is mudra. And mudra people think of as like hand gestures but mudra is a full body energy expression. And so there are things that we can do to manipulate parts of the spine, parts of the central nervous system, the eyes and the tongue, and in addition to the hands and whatever, that will amplify a person's awareness of energy in their spine. You could call it chakras. It will amplify what you see when you close your eyes and you're in deep trance like that. And it'll also really contribute. It's a synergistic practice to pranayama, which is breathing. So these energy gestures of the body, I learned directly from BNS Iyengar, who's like 96 years old right now, the oldest living teacher of Ashtanga Vinyasa Krama, which is a particular style of yoga that I practiced a lot. And so it'll be coming tr transmission through him. I still have my notes. I still practice these and I'll be transmitting them to the sorcerers and the people in the program. Not everybody in there is a sorcerer. And this will be very good for sensitivity, for understanding some of the more uh, subtle cues that I give in the yoga postures. It'll make things make more sense and it will amplify your sensitivity of energy in your spine and your body, just in your mind as you notice things. These are subtle practices that you're going to be really hard pressed to find. I'll teach them slowly because there's risks, um, but they're not injury risks like doing too many push-ups or, you know, dislocating a shoulder or something. The risks are in agitating the nervous system because of these kind of subtle contractions or how you use, you know, your appendages or whatever, you'll know as you start to do it, you're like, oh, I can only do so much of this because it's very stimulating. So I'm excited to share this. If you're interested, this is the third month of Yoga for Sorcery. So we have a progression of classes. It's like 24 classes or something right now. And all of the movements, I mean, if you just follow along, you're going to really raise your mobility. I've talked about this before. Raise your mobility, get to start getting some flexibility, be able to sit still. I've already taught four different or five different breathing techniques that, um, you know, give you a tool belt of how to 
how to treat any kind of state of mind or any kind of state of emotional state. You have some breathing practices that can hack into that and change your state. Uh, but the real appeal of this next month is everything is going to be geared. And when you sign up, and the link is in the description too, when you sign up, you get all the past recordings too. So you can catch up with those things. In many ways, they build on previous classes, but also I try to make each class accessible in case you didn't see that previous class or you just signed up or whatever. And um, so for this next month, I'm going to be focusing on energy mudras. And I think the sorcerers are going to really like it. Anybody that sees this, if you've been hesitating to join, I mean, this is a very potent practice that, I mean, unless you go to India or you find some teachers, and even then, I mean, one of the benefits of training with me is not just that I'm good at yoga, and I wouldn't consider myself the best at yoga, but I'm definitely very good at communicating it and getting the lessons across. And because this is what I study, I don't live with a yoga master, I live with a communication master. And... So take benefit of this while it's around. Yoga for Sorcery, link in the description. Shout out to Frank White. Salute, sir. And I'll see you in the next one. Oh.